we're continuing in the central nervous system, the brain part nine, and um, page 446, we were look, taking a look here at the brain stem, which in this, clay, in this case includes a fourth portion, which is the diencephalon, which we've concluded, we've discussed the uh, what's going on with the midbrain. So that aspect of it is concluded. Uh, where were we? Here we are right here. So here is the um, the portion that is above the pons, and we have mainly these uh, crooks, crus cerebri, which are the cerebral peduncles. And then we have, as you can see here, we went over this in the previous section, we have a source of um, melanin, which is uh, tyrosine-rich, uh, slightly modified uh, biochemistry for um, that which is to be used as uh, dopamine. So there's biosynthetic pathways through here which, in which we're using this material to make dopamine. We're using it to make melatonin, many things of that nature. So... Um, this is all part of the of the midbrain project. Then we get down to the pons. Let's take a look at where they're looking at the pons right here. Remember that the pons is an anterior feature of the um, fourth ventricle. Uh, so the fourth ventricle lies between the pons and the cerebellum, which we're about to uh, consider next. Um, these are called ponti nuclei. The cerebellum is going to basically figure out um, based on all the information available, uh, how you did in your physical projects, if you were throwing a basketball, if you were dancing, if you were um, engaged in any activity that you needed to do well, it's going to um, evaluate everything. And um, the intention of what you intended to do, the voluntary action, is actually transmitted through this portion here um, in the middle uh, to the cerebellum. So uh, then we also have the um, up and down, as it were, of the projection fibers going through there. And uh, we do have some uh, cranial nerves coming through here. And so they're listing for us the trigeminal. This is actually where herpes simplex 1 resides, is in the, um, in the uh, uh, origins here of the trigeminal nerve. So a lifelong infection usually. Most Americans, somewhere north of 95 or 98 percent of Americans, have herpes simplex 1 living in their trigeminal nerve. And hopefully it tracks out in the oral cavity, but not in the, um, <laughs> in the uh, orbit of the eye. Okay, so um, that's part of that program. Then we come here to the medulla, and the medulla is listed here. And again, we have a little bit of the fourth ventricle left in this particular slice. And um, we have some choroid plexus uh, available for us there. Um, I'm not getting into all of these various nuclei that are presented here. But remember that we have 9, 10, and 11 cranial nerves. 9, 10, and 11, as well as 12 that come out from either side of the olivary uh, nucleus here. Here's the olivary nucleus. Here's the post uh, nuclear sulcus. Here's the pre-nuclear sulcus. From this sulcus or groove here, we have cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11. From this sulcus right here, we have cranial nerve 12, which comes out. So we'll be dealing with that in the next chapter, all about that event. There are a number of things that happen in the medulla um, that r regulate the heart and breathing rate. So that's something we should take a look at here. Um, let's come back into the text portion of this, and um, we do have some discussion here. We have some bullets for the ponds. Okay, so um, so we have the deepest projection fibers running down through. Um, again, this is where we take some of the information that's intentional, and we uh, siphon it off to the cerebellum in order for the cerebellum to make decisions. So there's uh, these conversations, they say, uh, between the brain and the um, cerebellum in order to determine what's the best way uh, to do something. 
if you've done it only a few times, you might be um, having a wide range of possible outcomes. If you've done it very often, if you've been a professional craftsperson or artist and you've engaged in a particular process, dancer, um, musician, uh, sculptor, or whatever, the uh, the activities might be a little bit more refined and you might have more control over the uh, the outcome. In the medulla oblongata, we have set points. There are some of these set points that are further refined in the ponds that we were just talking about. But nevertheless, uh, we do have the, the pyramids, which represent the passageway of uh, projection fibers coming down through the body, all of the motor uh, activities coming down, uh, the intentions of the brain. We have the decussation of the pyramids, which means crossing over. The uh, left side of my brain operates the right side of my skeletal body muscles. Okay, so there is that aspect to it. Okay, then um, let's press on then into the um, activities here of um, the functions of the medulla oblongata, uh, cardiovascular center. We're going to regulate heart rate if the heart is strong and can take on large volumes of um, of blood and of course if we have a good blood volume because we've been drinking plenty of water then we have a slow heart rate if we have um, low blood pressure or low blood volume then the heart has to beat faster in order to get the smaller stroke volume to match the cardiac and the needed cardiac output so uh, this there's, there's an inverse relationship between blood pressure and heart rate if the uh, blood pressure is high, the heart rate is low. If the blood pressure is low and weak and um, we don't have enough volume, then the heart rate is high. Uh, respiratory center is also regulated here as well as in the pons. Um, and then we have the vagus coming out of this portion of the, um, of the anatomy, uh, the medulla oblongata, and it's going to regulate everything to do with digestion and... Um, coughing, sneezing, so on. Uh, we haven't gotten to the digestive system yet, but that's going to be one of the major things that goes on there. Then they want to talk about the cerebellum is next, because that's at the same level as the pons, and there is a relationship with everything in the body that has to do with cerebellar activity. The cerebellum is in co uh, coordination with the uh, basal nuclei, Okay, let's take a look here at the physical features. The cerebellum um, actually has peduncles or connections, superior, middle, and inferior peduncles, which means that there's going to be golden arches uh, connecting the uh, the uh, cerebellum to the uh, cerebrum, to the pons, and to the body below. Um, and so a lot of information is going to come up through that way. Let's take a quick glance here at um, the cerebellum and the uh, back of the brain. And uh, here they have a mid-sagittal cut through and uh, we see the arbor vitae, which is the uh, tree of life. We can actually see here sort of that appearance to it. Here is the artistic rendition of that. We have a number of different um, uh, lobes, as you can see here, and they've sort of laid out the little uh, topography of the body, so we're able to control um, these aspects of our body. So you can see that there's not a lot of consciousness of hips and thighs, not a lot of consciousness of upper arms and shoulders uh, or tor torso, but we're able to control our feet and hands and particularly our uh, balance in space. Okay, so we have this sort of very three-dimensional capability if you're a diver or a gymnast, you're aware of this, as a dancer, and so on. It's possible if you've put your body through a number of uh, different uh, twists and turns and given yourself adequate levels of information, you know how to regulate your body in this particular way. So let's take a look then at the one, two, three, four of uh, processing here. Uh, beginning with the peduncles, we have a superior, a middle, and an inferior peduncle. And uh, they tell what, in each case, we're getting information about uh, from the superior peduncle. Actually, this sort of comes at the end when the uh, cerebellum advises the brain about, why don't you try this next? 
It's also going to be initially to receiving information from the basal nuclei as to how soft or how hard we're going to go. Okay, so that's a smoothness issue. Here in the middle uh, peduncle, we learn about the intentions coming down, the voluntary motor activity, and then we also learn about the outcomes. Uh, at the inferior level, we know what the muscle proprioception is, the position of the body, and the type of uh, effort we made, and then uh, there's the vestibular nuclei in the brain, um, which are concerned with equilibrium. So we know if uh, our own body was in balance, and we also know from sensory information what the outcome was. So let's take a look at the processing next.